Now I can go one by one on these and go and click on them one by one and it will share and it makes it blue. Or I can click on that and it will do all 25 or everything it can, um, it can do. This detection of things being common, doubly defined, is governed by, on the left hand side, by a coincidence tolerance. So 0.1 millimeter. It says if so if you have dirty CAD and all CAD is dirty, unfortunately, depends on the kernel that, that, that CAD package uses, how they define geometry. But things are never, I mean, with some significant digit, things will not line up. And that's just the nature of digital representation. So we so if you're working with very small parts and point one millimeter is something that you want to be separate, then obviously you need to adjust, uh, adjust that tolerance. Working with uh, sort of meter size parts that we're doing here, then that could be good enough. But look at what it's trying to, to share, whether it makes sense. Then you can click on it all. In our case, I mean, I, these all look like parts where I think it should be sharing. So I can just do the, the, the lot of them. And it says at the top there is no coincident topology in the model by which you should be that are within 0.1 millimeters from each other. Okay. So you, you control that. So the colors then mean something. They say where things are touching and how many different parts are touching. So red would be, uh, it's not touching anything else. I think purple is probably going to be two things are touching and, and yellow might be three things are touching. I'm not sure um, what these colors mean. You can check. Okay. So the only, okay, so, so we are basically with that saying that all these plates which are representing my surfaces are welded to each other. They are connected, solidly connected, and they're going to transfer the load. They're not going to move to the relative to each other, they're not going to bulge out. But if any of them I did not want to touch, I would not have shared the topology. And I could go yeah. later in mechanical and say how they must interact to the contact method I'm using, whether it's joints or contacts or bonnet contacts or other things I want to be doing. Um, <coughs> So for now, all these surfaces will go through to ANSYS. Um, some of them made some funny things here when I made those bit surfaces. It also crosses out these. If it bugs you, you can delete all those things that are not being used. You can move these other ones up to give them new names and so on. Just a point, we are not assigning thicknesses here, although you can, because this, this is also a CAD package for other software. We're going to apply the thicknesses in ANSYS Mechanical because these surfaces will be picked up as shell elements and the shell element needs a thickness. And also for this assignment, you're going to want me to play with those thicknesses and it's easier to do it from within Mechanical with the parameter setting than to do it from space time. Okay. So I think I'm done in this uh, package because everything is separate and they're all connected. Um, and I've cleaned up the joint. So, obviously, the next step is to open up mechanical. Um, so I just I just double click on the model button there, and that will launch mechanical with that geometry um, that I just looked at. So when I went out of uh, of space, then it wrote this uh, doc file and also wrote. Uh, uh, another type of file that mechanical reads, I'm not exactly sure what the concentration is. And that will now get read into mechanical and, and relevant information will be will come in. Uh, okay, so so this there's, there's only one. I will continue with the with the demo. And then there's only a one post processing or a couple of um, presentations on meshing I want to look at. But before uh, before I go to that, let's let's first just look at the model of how it comes into mechanical. So it's a it takes a while to attach it, and then you will see a bunch of surfaces. And it will claim that the these surfaces are incompletely defined because they don't have a thickness to them. And so you need to obviously assign recording. thicknesses. I can work in this laptop. Go that one so long. Oh, 
Okay, so there's our final day attaching the geometry. And then it shows the geometry to you. Again, maybe it went quickly last time. At the top there, you can see those, those green little buttons talking about whether you want to select vertices, edges, surfaces. Last week, we only had vertices and edges. Now we've added surfaces, but we don't have any volumes or bodies to select. And then the way you select is that little arrow with the red. You can either do a single select or a box select. So a single select, obviously, just where you click, box select, you can then, as in space time happens automatically, you can draw a box around everything, and everything is selected. Now with faces, they don't all look green, because they only get selected on one side. So the display that you see of green, of some of them, it just means that the orientation of those faces were differently defined. So it's, it's about whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise, you don't have control over that. Uh, but so sometimes it might not look like you're selecting a face because its back is being selected. Um, so they're all selected now um, in the geometry tab under project model project. Let me just um, again, uh, change this a bit so that this left hand screen shows the whole. Uh, window. So under the geometry tab, I have to expand it to see what's under it. There's a sys, which comes, which refers to the previous um, model, and then you'll see a bunch of surfaces. Okay, so everything that can in are surfaces, mid surface, and each one of them is a separate part. So if I click on, well, if I unselect there first, so nothing is. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll something else. so so nothing is selected now. So I can obviously when I click on any of those geometry elements see which part. So that's the curved part. Now mid surface solid six, mid surface one doesn't mean a lot. So you can write it there and and give it a new name. F2 or just rename and call that curved plate. So I, I suggest that you, in your models that you build, whether it's structural mechanics or curved flow, always give things names because it just makes it so much easier for you to, to go and assign properties to that. So there's a, um, a mid-surface. That's the central web. So F2 uh, central web. Okay, and so on. What you see at the bottom is there's a thickness. Now, somewhere I must have said 15 millimeters somewhere. Okay, from the name somewhere. So it seems like all of these have been made 15 millimeter by default. I think in the assignment I'll tell you to start with. So I can select all of them at the same time with the control and the mouse button. Click on thickness there and say five. Now, just a note on units. You might have noticed that if you want to display things in, in uh, the default, when you open up the first time, will be meters and pascals. If you want to show millimeters and megapascals, you have to go to units at the top and drop down to metric, millimeter, kilogram, meter. So that will automatically muted for square millimeters is megapascals, because there's a tension to three times two. Um, if I do meter, then at the bottom it will say my thickness is 5.005. So just make sure that the unit system that you want to display the results in is the one that you want, and also doing thicknesses or mesh sizes will then also be in that unit. Okay, so I've now made all of them 5 millimeters thick. I think that was maybe the, the base case that I showed you. Um, but I can pick any one of them and change the thickness there. Obviously, I can also, um, when I select all of them, click on that little white box next to thickness, which will put a blue P into it, and immediately back in uh, workbench, there will be a parameter set. If I double click on that, it will say that you've got a parameter. Uh, and load, you can load all the parameters. Okay, I don't know about all these groups where they came from. 
Okay. Some other groups that came across that I don't know what they are. What group do you want to like? Okay, so I've got to go and clean up my space now. Which, which one? P. Which, which, which? All of these. Uh, just a quick point here on, on if you're going to be changing thicknesses of many, say I want all the vertical webs to be the same. But I, I, get, I get very frustrated by typing in a different number for each one here. There and there and there and there and there. Then you can link the parameters to each other. And that's very easy to do. So for instance, if all these other thicknesses are want to be the same, then the one I leave at 5, so P11 is 5, but P12, I click on the, on the 5 there, and then at the bottom where it says 5 millimeters, I just put in P11, enter. That then grays out the P12 parameter, and it fixes it at 0 0.005 meters. If I change that 5 to 6, then it updates this one to 0 0.006. So in other words, P12 equals P11. Just or if I pick up yeah. P13, yeah. I'll double click yeah. down here. I'll also make that yeah, P11. Yeah. It's case sensitive. Okay, so it means I only have to change uh, one common parameter and all the, the other ones that I want to be the same will then be the same. So that saves some time later when you play with different parameters. That's cool. Okay, maybe at this, before I forget, um, apparently some of you have had some problems with the solving of your models taking very long or freezing. And it's to do with how the analysis is set up. So under solution, if you right click on solution, uh, no. Under solution information, no, sorry, analysis settings. If you right click, no. <laughs> if you right click, no. I first have to set up something. No. You go to tools. You go to tools, solve process no, no, no. settings. BB wires are off. Tools? That tells, and then under advanced, it, it tells the mechanical how to treat your computer with uh, different cores and memory you've got. Because it was zone out on the phone. Now that tick box at the top there, this distribute solution if possible, will be ticked. But just untick that. Right? That's what you did. That's what I did. And then it, and then it just works with the amount of memory it's got or whatever. It doesn't try to like use your machine as a cluster or something. Okay, so if you've got some problems with things running forever and it's not an error in the code. So obviously if you make a mistake by not connecting things, then it's also going to try forever to try and get a solution. Okay. So I've shown the, the geometry, I've shown where to change the thickness, and again, you can parameterize that thickness, so you can give these different thicknesses by themselves. You could also suppress things here if you don't want to go delete them in space frame, so I can also suppress that body and then it won't appear in the solution. Um, there will still be a line there for the measure to see. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's just briefly talk about meshing. So the next step, obviously, is to do meshes. Uh, also, the default was structural steel for all these pieces of geometry. So at the bottom of that thickness, there's a there's an assignment of material. If you add other materials, this assignment we're not playing with that yet, but you can make. In our new materials that you measure. obviously have the first assignment engineering data, and then they'll get listed here. So it shows structural steel by default. On the <laughs> okay, let's move on. So meshing, um, well, this will be, I'll pick up this um, surface meshing intro. I think some uh, yeah. of this was shown to you last time. Uh, it just talks about mechanical, and I click on mesh, then in the bottom left corner, you'll see properties of that mesh. So that includes sizing. So if I open up the sizing, it says certain things like uh, the feature size, curvature um, values, sort of the default mesh that it will use if I just right-click and say generate mesh. 
Okay, so the global settings will determine what happens now. And then, so I can change the global settings if I want a different global mesh. Okay, you had said it failed to do a, a quad mesh, so then gave me a 10 mesh for some reason. Now it does show that 5 millimeter thickness, even though it's just a sharp element. So if I change the thicknesses, these things will look fatter. Okay, so there are two, two ways. You can change the global settings or you can right click and then go insert different sizings. You suppress these for some reason. Now, as soon as I do that, then I can pick bodies or edges or, or faces. So I can, for instance, now go to a certain selection mode with an edge or a face. So I can click on that face, for instance, apply to that face a different element size, say of 10, just, and then I can pick soft or hard. Soft means that it will try to do that, but if it can't, it will follow the global settings. Hard says you will, I'm sorry, wrong one there. Element size, hard. So drop down list then, soft or hard. Sorry. Then geometry selection. That drop down there, soft or hard. Hard means you will give me 10 millimeter cells and then you can worry about the rest. Well, so if I click on that body and just say only measure this body. Um, you can go border, so. so you can selectively mesh the problem one by one. You don't have to do everything at the same time. Hard. Especially with a large model, you don't want to do everything at the same time. You want to sort out your meshing first. Good. Then it will, if you click on mesh, it will, so oh, I really struggled, this didn't work for me. Because I didn't delete the rest of the mesh, so parts of the mesh had to adhere to the larger cell, as you see at the bottom, and where it could, it did that. So I can, I can almost delete the whole mesh by just going right click, clear generated data. We'll throw the whole mesh away. And now it will, if I do that, face only, it will give me probably a nice X mesh <coughs> of size 10. Okay, so it takes a while. So now it's given me not a complete X mesh, but it used the phase measure. Uh, wow. Okay, if I want a, a perfect X mesh, I have to yeah. also click Stay on this face and, and right click and say insert face meshing. Now that will give me quadrilaterals and map mesh. Yes, see the bottom left there. Now, so if I mesh that again, it will now enforce the right map on mesh so it's a perfect brick no, you are square elements, which it should be able to do because it was a rectangle Select. to start with. Um, no, I guess it says, yes, probably from the CAD model where something is not topologically closed, it's probably where these things are attached. Okay, to me. So, oh, no, pop top. It depends. If the part were on its own, it would it easily do that. So, here. Okay, so it, it gives a little symbol there that says it was not possible, so I'm just going to delete that one. Geometry. Okay, so back quickly back to the to these slides. The Global mesh yeah. controls or yeah. otherwise yeah. things like size functions, yeah. uh, proximity curvature works. Uh, we'll pick up like yeah, holes, right give you a nice update. nice little yeah, uh, meshes around holes using the you proximity function. On the uh, the curvature will base on local system. curvature, so there are some options you can pick. And again, look at these these notes if you want to see what the effect is of each of those. E featuring will take away detail that you don't want, like dirty CAD with gaps, or like lettering on things that you don't want to include in your model. It will oh, yeah. Ignore certain features while meshing. Uh, and then there are different ways of yeah, sizing options. Again, I, I don't want, I'm just showing you briefly that the you can you can bias things, in other words, you're gonna have stretching functions. Okay. So I have fine old mesh to be fine, but anyway, so it's giving me now a, a nice mesh there, the rest is so not very uh, well distributed. Again, this is something you will play with. Um, but now under under the mesh I've got things here sizing and then below sizing 
I've got quality. Now I can then decide what I want to look at. What mesh metric? I can look at element quality, and then it will give me an histogram at the bottom. Open your screen will be a bit bigger, where it will tell me what elements I've got and what quality that they are. There are different ways of plotting this. I can also um, let's go back to that training. So they talk about good and bad quality, clear cells that are squashed that will give you bad answers. Uh, how to look at the quality, how to look at things like commonality, getting numbers out, how to plot these things, how to display them, and so on. Now, mesh quality investigations mean nothing if you don't know what the correct result is. So you can you can get a result and then you can see how I changed the mesh does the result change. But how much it's changing and when it stops changing will have to be compared to some other result that you can compare with, a good result. So I'm just putting it out there. We're not going to focus this week too much on, on mesh uh, refinement. Um, so just get a decent mesh that fits on your machine. Um, just a final word on the student license. There's a statistics button right there at the bottom of, of the global mesh. You click on mesh. If I expand that, it will tell me how many nodes and elements I'm using. Now, the student license can use up to 32,000 nodes. Right? So, so this is now 6,000 something. So we will obviously not give you these big problems that can't fit into that. Obviously, it will also run a bit slower, but if it's a button, student license won't work. It won't give you an answer. Okay, so finally, um, we need to apply nodes. So in this case, uh, we're going to be using a remote force. So in the assignment, I'm very clear. Fix the bottom with a, with a fixed support and use a remote force. And I'll tell you how much the, dip, uh, the vessel weighs and how many liters it can hold. So you can figure out what the force is. Split that in two and apply. So the first one is the bottom. I want to uh, insert a fixed support, and I want to do it on a face. So I click on these faces at the bottom. So I'm holding in control. I pick the top of them. Uh, so it doesn't look like I selected them. And then I say apply. So now that support is going nowhere. And then secondly, I want to apply load from the top. So I'm just going to pick A value. So insert fixed remote force. And I apply it to this curved surface. So this is where the vessel rests on the support. And I then have to give it, um, let's just apply to that surface. And then I, it, it tells me where it is, but it doesn't know yet because I haven't told it which direction. So components, the x direction is downwards in this model. So I want a negative something x, so I don't know, let's say 100,000 newtons. And then it, uh, it shows it negative, so I must be positive, otherwise it's not going to... So I look at the arrow that it's pointing downwards. I can see exactly where this force acts. If it's in the wrong place, then your model is skew or your corner system is wrong. Okay. So the fixed support and the remote force, I can display both the boundary conditions. They will define what happens. Okay, the only thing that remains is I have to tell what, what I want to be looking at. Now I'm asking about mass. So how do I do mass? So I click on the whole geometry. I go to properties at the bottom. I click on, I see it's 44 kilograms at the moment. If I click on the geometry at the top and properties, then the mass will have a little box. So I can click on that box and make it a parameter. So that will give me an output of what the mass is as I change thicknesses, for instance. And then I, in the solution, I want uh, total deformation, insert deformation total, and I also want insert stress, equivalent from easy stress. So they become items listed here. I can add other things, probes, reaction forces. I can say the fixed support. What is the force acting on it, on the ground? Drag that onto solution. 
gives me yet another item called force reaction. Okay, then click on the solve button there or right click anywhere on these ones and say solve. Hopefully it will run and not uh, hang. It should be okay. And once it's done, everything will have green tick marks. If it worked, otherwise red false. Unknown error occurred. Okay. So then you go to message. What error is that? Check the solver output. Solution information. I think my mesh might be defined. Mine work. That's weird. Says, uh, Which was good. Yeah, it wanted two Which gigs of RAM and it's not available. Okay, so I've got some other stuff open here, obviously. So I will go back and make my mesh a bit coarser. I will delete that sizing. And I will just use the default mesh. Okay, so if you get an error, it just be that your machine wasn't powerful enough, right? Not necessarily that there's something wrong. So let's try and solve now. Hopefully, um, I've got a few elements now. I think it's that remote force. Because I, uh, uh, okay, I so disabled the web. So here yeah, I go to the backup version. It disabled the web. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Geometry isolated. Why did you do that? I'd like it. Because huh? that's what you need. Okay, if you look at the different ways, check how much it could have deformed badly. But okay, so the end of, of the assignment, as I say, yeah. Uh, uh, so we near the point where I've got the top of the information and I get pictures like. So you're showing us a U1. Oh, the end of the assignment is to try and make that. You're showing us a U1. I say you can do that. Oh, okay. You can do that. Okay, so changing the pictures. I, I don't really care what you do there. As long as you keep the top part the same way it's rolled into the vessel and it stands on the same footprint. But check now. So whatever you put in between, you can change. <laughs> Yeah, that's rigged. Yeah. Okay, so for instance, I get uh, total deformations. Just some of these probes. There's a there's a max and a min probe that shows where it occurs on the structure, and then there's a probe tool where you can click on any point. You want to get rid of that tag? You go to that left and upper corner under file. Click on that guy. Click on this. So this is the max and min probes. And uh, this is the play button we can select. Okay, so I can obviously try and see where things are performing how much. It's only 0.05 millimeters, so I can do a lot more. And I've got 7 megapascal stress, which is way low. No, so this thing is over designed completely. So back to the assignment, I said changing the thicknesses, adding more webs to spread the load. Obviously, delete some of the webs, put them in other places, or make cutouts. Or at the end, I say um, try topology optimization. Now, this this YouTube video takes that triangular bracket and ends up with this bracket here. So it goes through a process of first analyzing the base case, which you've just done. We've got all the static structural and and, and so on. You'll see towards the end, static structural, steady state thermal, there's topology optimization. So that needs to get dragged onto the solution. Then it takes the whole mechanical model, the geometry, everything, and it puts it into this optimization framework. So this is since 18.1 is part of Ansys. It used to be a, a, another company's software, which they then bought. And then inside the, you can watch this video, which I give a link in the assignment, how they basically, let me just maybe show a few screenshots. Uh, but the, the challenge you've got is that the optimizer will give you this very weird shape where it took material away that's not required. And then, um, Finally, it will um, it will take that answer. 
Do the topology optimization, get a, get this weird shape, and then he goes back into space plate to clean that thing up. So it is manufacturable. So he uses a bunch of tools that are quite neat in the sketch mode, like trimming lines away, redrawing it with circles. Um, so I suggest you know look at that and see how you, can, you know see what if you take those standard words and you just apply this, what does it come up with? Where, which parts are actually superfluous? Um, like it deleted this part of the model, and now all he's doing is cleaning it up so that you can make it. But okay, otherwise, you get a very weird looking shape. So he basically trims lines, redraws circles, um, some of these curves, he just makes straight lines and so on. Okay, so, so some nice cleanup tools in the sketch mode also are illustrated in this. Yeah. Obviously, once I uh, output total information, I can scroll down to the bottom and take the maximum value and click on there to make it a parameter. I can click on the equivalent space, scroll all the way down, make the maximum one a parameter. That then uh, starts featuring inside uh, my uh, workbench problem. And then, and then I need to go back to do space plans, so I'm just going to briefly uh, does that. Just show you, you can draw a sketch on any surface that you can think of. So if you have a, a round part, you can pick a surface and you can sketch. Like if you wanted to draw your name on a cup or something, you can sketch on anything in space plan. So with this model, with the webs, so apart from drawing new webs, I can, for instance, take that surface, click on it, and then say sketch mode. So I've got 3D mode, and sketch mode, equal, and then plan view. I can now go and, and draw things on this. So I can take circles, for instance, uh, start them wherever I want. So say, say I want to make a series of cutouts. <laughs> So, so if I make a hole there of, I don't know, whatever you want, 50, I can create a pattern of them. And then I can say the pitch. I'm trying this now on the fly. Okay, so I can. How many you wanted to create? Okay, obviously that makes sense for that. So that could be a quick way of cutting pieces from that. So these are now separate surfaces, and I can just delete them. Oops. Okay, at the moment they are separate. They're not touching anything. So I probably need to split that surface with these guys. Or I have to split the face with to do the cut the face. Okay, or I have to go check out to do this, but what I'm trying to, to, to show you is that you can go and draw different things. If I get back to you first have to change the time, this is still brown. At the moment, I was not successful in splitting that, so you see. No, you need to do it. You need to do it. So you say, you know, you can do it. So they can pull it. And that will open. This will take a chain. This time I was.
Okay, so I made, I made these cylinders to cut the face with. Okay, so now I can... Okay, so I, I definitely have made some holes there now. How did you pull it through the other way? And now, uh, on that edge, if I pull it... Do I have to do all of this? Can I just like, split bodies to join it? I pull it larger, then I get a P. So with the initial creation, I didn't get a P. But if I take an existing face and I pull it, I can get a P. Okay, so now I can parameterize how much bigger that hole must be than when I started with. Okay, so that would be a way of... of Automatically, you go and have different size holes. She did this. Yeah, so, split this. Just on a, on a um, final note, they, for those of you who want to become advanced users, there's something, there's a new feature since 19. Um, 18 it was beta, and that's called scripting. So if you say file new, even though you open here, just say new script. It then opens another window on the right hand side um, with Python, oh, there we go. a Python language. So, and then it, it's got a record button, just like maybe map the diary button. Okay, so whatever I'm doing from now onwards will get scripted. And then I can I can build up a history. I can say do this, then that, then that, then that. I can put in variables in there and I can make it grow. So if you're interested in that, um, I can give you some, there's some nice YouTube videos on scripting in space there. And then you can build any job you can think of. You can treat this like a, a history-based tag. Okay, not a direct model because there's steps. So for instance, if I click on record there, and I say now say um, sketch, and I can draw um, I'm going to the sketch mode. Okay, so we're just thinking a bit now. Um, and I say draw a rectangle there on that sketch plane. On the right hand side it said point 2D create 20438 and it gives coordinates there. Now that 38 I can make tools. Any number I want, or I can put a variable name there, and I can just define above in the code what it is. And once I'm done recording, I will, I will have a series of commands. Okay. So those of you just that are very powerful, you want to do parameterization and optimization to add the scripting. Same. And, and you can then play the script. You can delete stuff that you've done. To get this thing to pop up your own. Sorry. For some I, I basically script. made a new surface now. Somewhere at the bottom. I made a surface somewhere at the top of this. There it is. So I can delete that. And I can just play the script again. And there it pops in again. So I'm not going to do this to you. Okay, I, I pressed the delete before I set stop recording.